Good old Sonic the Hedgehog. For better or for worse, Sonic will likely be around forever. No matter how many turds Sonic Team gives us, they just can't seem to let this blue bastard die. Whether or not that's a good thing, I'm really not sure. If you're watching this video, then you are likely one of two things or both. Number one, you're a Sonic fan and are curious to hear another person's opinions. Or number two, you're a fan of the channel, and I'll take either, honestly. Anyway, Sonic has been a large part of my life, and while the 3D games have ranged from terrible to amazing, I can't get over my fandom for this guy. With Team Sonic Racing just a month and a half away from release, I think it's appropriate to put out my list of my favorite Sonic games. As a disclaimer, guys, this list was made due to my personal biases. I have my tastes on how Sonic games should be, and I would love to hear about some of your favorites down in the comments section. So, without further ado guys, this is my top 5 favorite Sonic games. Five. Sonic Heroes Ah yes, the very first multi-platform title after Sega fell out of the console race. Sonic Heroes and I have a very... interesting relationship. Back in 2003, I could not stand this game. I hated pretty much everything about it. The story, the gameplay, the slippery controls, the voice acting, the art style, the everything, basically. At the time, Sonic Heroes was THE only Sonic game that I hated. But then again, there wasn't a whole lot to compare it to back then. It wasn't until I did an everything wrong with collaboration with Chari 5 that I decided to give the game another chance and I have no regrets doing so. This game went from my most hated Sonic game to one of my most beloved ones. It's crazy how life works, huh? The plot of Sonic Heroes is rather simple. There are four teams of three characters whose ultimate mission is to take down Metal Sonic who manipulated our heroes to go on their own independent adventures to collect data from them. Each of their stories vary, however... They're not very interesting, but then again, most Sonic games don't have very enticing stories. The gameplay is unique and definitely the best part of the game. You control three characters at once and utilize a specialty from each of them. Such as this, Sonic is a speed character, Tails is a flying character, and Knuckles is a power character. Each character is designed to deal with specific obstacles and enemies, and if you want a high score, you gotta use their abilities efficiently. At this point, Sonic Team has never returned to this style of gameplay, and I kinda wish that they would. If they don't make a new game, then at least remake this one. Clean up the story, get better voice talent, and tighten up the loose bolts on the gameplay. I mean, I'd buy it, wouldn't you? Until that day comes though, I recommend you give this game a shot. It's rough around the edges for sure, but still enjoyable in my opinion. Four. Sonic Adventure A gem from the Dreamcast era, Sonic Adventure is a game that has aged rather well in my opinion. It's Sonic's first real attempt at three-dimensional gameplay after the mediocre games that came before it. To me, it was able to pull off a successful transition from the standard 2D gameplay of the classics to 3D in almost near perfection. The game's not perfect though, and I know plenty of people will argue that Sonic Adventure 2 is better, but to each their own, my friends. Anyway, I rented a Dreamcast from Blockbuster constantly because yes, that was a thing back then, and I always rented Sonic Adventure 1 for the system. A problem I faced though is that I was not able to save due to not having a memory card, and as far as I knew, I don't think you could rent one either. So I was stuck playing this game from the very beginning every time I fired up the system, and it wasn't until the DX port for the GameCube that I was able to actually complete the game. Sonic Adventure is the first game in the series to have a fully fleshed out story told from several perspectives, a practice long abandoned by now, and that's probably for the best for the time being. Just like in Sonic Heroes, the story has one plot, but each character experiences a different part of it. So the overall plot is our heroes fighting to defeat Eggman and his partner slash not partner Chaos from destroying Station Square. The story actually has a little bit of a lore to it as well, such as Chaos himself. He's a guardian to the Chow, and after Knuckles' ancestors harmed these Chow, trying to steal the power of the Mass Rimmel for themselves, he became uncontrollably angry, causing an echidna named Tikal to seal him away, as well as herself into the Master Emerald for years to come. The idea for the plot is great, but sadly it just wasn't executed very well. The gameplay is separated between six characters. Each of them have their own little gimmicks, but not all of them are very great. 
I can give the game a pass though since this was the first true attempt at 3D gameplay and Sonic Team was likely feeling experimental at the time. With one or two exceptions, nothing from the adventure series appears in recent Sonic games, so let that be a testament to what worked here and what didn't. Despite the game's flaws though, I enjoyed a lot and I definitely recommend giving this game a try. There is a possibility of a remake happening and if it is, I will most certainly be picking it up. Until then though, the original will have to do. Three. Sonic Generations. Oh my god! Another 3D Sonic game on the list! Maybe Biggums isn't a classic cuck after all! <laughs> Boy, you are going to be disappointed here pretty soon. Sonic Generations was a continuation of the already successful boost to win formula. It all started with Unleashed, which was... Uh, okay. And then it moved forward with Colors, which was amazing. Generations, in my opinion, perfected everything about this formula and even experimented with something new, but still familiar. Before this game came out, I had honestly lost hope for the series. I didn't really care for Unleashed and I didn't get to play Colors, so all I had to go off of was the accident all the way down to SA1. Luckily though, Generations far exceeded my expectations and to this day is my favorite 3D Sonic game. The story is all about modern and classic Sonic teaming up to take down Eggman yet again. This time Eggman harnessed the power of a time eater in an attempt to correct his previous failures at taking over the world. The story in my opinion is nearly perfect for a Sonic game. It has cheesy and lighthearted humor complemented with a childish setting. Keep in mind folks, Sonic is a children's game, always has been and it always will be, so I am perfectly fine with the story's methods here, but that isn't to say that the story is without issues. Because it's so short, it often feels rushed, which we all know is a practice that has almost killed the franchise more than once. Sonic Team really needs to stop doing that. The gameplay puts you in control of modern and classic Sonic playing through stages in the Sonic universe. You'll have modern Sonic running through places like Chemical Plant Zone, and then you'll have classic Sonic running through stages like Planet Wisp. Modern Sonic is all about 3D and 2D boost gameplay, while classic plays like how he did back on the Genesis. This was an amazing anniversary title, but sadly, it opens doors that probably shouldn't have been opened. Meaning that nowadays, Sonic Team relies on nostalgia to make fun games rather than innovating. Say what you will about Generations, but I think this game is wonderful, and of all the 3D Sonic games on the market, this has my highest level of recommendation. Check it out. Two. Sonic Mania. Come on. You knew this was coming. How could you not? Literally nobody hates this game, and if they do, then guess what? They would know a good Sonic game if it slapped them in the face. Sonic Mania is a masterpiece, plain and simple. However, what stops it from achieving perfection is its lack of originality. Either the stages are classic levels from the Genesis, or they're new ones but have the same obstacles as the old games. If you can get over these minor flaws, then this is the best 2D Sonic game ever made, period. Sonic Mania's story is all about Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles fighting to stop Eggman and his hard-boiled heavies from using the power of the Phantom Ruby for evil. If you purchase the DLC, then Mighty the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel join the fight as well. This game has no dialogue or anything like that, and I mean, it was meant to deliver the same experience as the classics back in the day, and deliver it does! The story is vague and likely left up to interpretation. The real fun of the game is in the gameplay and beyond. You have the option to control one of five characters and each of them have their own unique abilities, such as Sonic's Drop Dash and Tails' Flying ability. You utilize these abilities as well as speech to reach the end of the stage as quickly as possible. This, my friends, is a true return to form for Sonic games. I love the gimmicks, I love the animations, I love the frame rate, I love pretty much everything about this game. I can only hope that we get another Mania style game, but with new stages, new gimmicks, and heck, I'll take some new characters. Maybe they could find a way to get modern Sonic in here. Christian Whitehead and all the other people involved with this game's development are geniuses. They deserve every bit of money and every bit of praise they got from this game, and if you haven't purchased it yourself yet, you really need to. One! Sonic 3 and Knuckles. This, my friends, is the 
best Sonic game ever made. I know people will say that 2 is better, but I say nay. To me, Sonic 3 took everything great about Sonic 2 and made it even better. We got a new character to play as, we got the elemental shields, we got better sprites and even better stages. I have played and beaten this game dozens of times and I have no regrets doing so. You remember the multiple save files on the menu? Yeah, I was one of those people who had every slot 100% completed because I have no life and Sonic 3 was essentially the equivalent to me having a girlfriend at the time. Next thing I know it got pregnant and then I had to go away and go get milk and never come back and then there's the alimony. What were we just talking about? Oh yeah, 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 moving forward. The story of this amazing game picks up right where Sonic 2 left off. After defeating Eggman on the Death Egg, Sonic and Tails visit Angel Island where the Death Egg crash landed to finish the job. Once there, they were greeted by then newcomer Knuckles who steals the Chaos Emeralds from Sonic. From here, Sonic must recollect the Chaos Emeralds and defeat Eggman while dealing with the obstructions from Knuckles every now and then. Knuckles' story takes place after Sonic's where he must stop the Egg Robo from stealing the Master Emerald. The story is only there because you expect it to be. Not to mention, this is on a classic console so it's not like they could create an amazing cinematic experience. The gameplay allows you to choose between Sonic, Tails, or Knuckles. Like in Mania, each of them bring their own abilities to the table, and Knuckles even gets to explore certain areas of the levels that Sonic and Tails can't reach. Additionally, this game introduced the never again used Hyper Sonic and Hyper Knuckles forms. Why this hasn't made a return yet, I have no idea, but by god, it's one of the most awesome things ever introduced in a Sonic game. And those special stages, man, god, I miss these, and thank goodness Mania gave them to us. If it isn't clear, enough at this point guys I love this game the memories I have with it will never die and I will never get tired of playing it this is the game that will always remain not just as one of my favorite Sonic games but one of my favorite games of all time and that is why it takes the number one spot of my favorite Sonic games that's all the time I have left for tonight, folks. Thank you all so much for taking time to watch this video. Be sure to let me know if you agree or disagree with this list. Suggestions are always appreciated. And hey, if you happen to leave a comment that I really enjoyed, then maybe it'll appear in the next video. I'd like to encourage you all to take some time to look at the other content that I've made and possibly grace me with your subscription. Until the next video comes out, though, you all take it easy.